In this section, I will give you a crash course on the Swift programming language. And it's really a crash course because I try to... Um, when, when I started learning, I spent a lot of time first um, with the Swift programming language before I moved on to work with UIKit or for in your case of SwiftUI. And in some cases, this wasn't good because you get a lot of theoretical knowledge, but you have no idea how to use it and what's the point, what advantage would bring you. So it's a little bit, I don't want to overblow you with too much Swift right now. So I will cherry pick some of the Swift specialties. Uh, and we also have a look at where this comes in with our Swift UI code. So we explore a little bit what this means for our application. And I only want to give you as much as you need for the upcoming sections. And later on, we will go in more advanced features of a Swift language. Just because later you will, you cannot appreciate some of the stuff right now. It's, it would just be too much. The best resource, if you want to go more into detail about the Swift language, you can have a look at the Swift book or the um, Swift language website. And you see here, I'm now in the language guide and we have all this stuff that you could explore. At any time, go ahead and have a look at more there because I think it's the best resource, but for a beginner, it's just way too much detail. Okay, so now let's jump into Swift. I will just create a new project. So I'm creating here a new little app and this is my calculator project. So we are going to create a little calculator. So the first thing I want to talk about is naming conventions. So you see here in my project, I have this calculator project app and content view and we use camel case. So I just need this picture here actually. If you look at this picture with, from the wiki side, you see that we compose larger, we try to make names as descriptive as possible. And we do that by combining multiple words together. Me as a German, this is very easy. Um, so you just have to be a little bit more German by creating your words. And it's nice because every time you, know, you, you use a new word, you use a camel case or a capital letter. The other thing is you notice here, my camel case word here starts with a small C. But if you have a look at our project here, you see that content view starts with a capital letter. So usually if you have this kind of structs, we go, we go more to detail or this is later. Um, then you use a capital one, for example, or some of the others you see here, for example, view starts with a capital one or here down here, destruct. My preview conforms to preview provider. So this starts with a P, uh, capital one. If you use properties, so since we are going to try to make a um, little calculator, for example, you would have one property saying final results, final result. And you see, because I have a property, I start with a small F and I compose two words here together to make it as descriptive as possible. I use here this camel case. Now it tells me there's something missing. Yes, this is true because now it asks me for the type. So Swift is a strongly typed programming language. And this is, in this case, it's a probably since it's a result and we're calculating something, it must be some number. And I'm not going to make a super amazing calculator here. We're just using whole numbers. So I'm using here an int. And I declare, so if you have an equal sign, it means you're declaring this property. I start with a zero. The other thing is that you see here is this int, this um, type is also a struct. So like this, that's why it starts with a capital letter. We're always trying to use the most descriptive names. For example, if I would have just called this number, which is, you might know, no, okay, this is, this is a number, but it's an int, so yes, it is a number, but what do I do with it? Maybe you know now what you want to do with this, but later it's really hard. So try to uh, use more descriptive names, even if they're longer. So sometimes it's getting a little bit crazy with the length of the names, even from Swift, but this just helps you to read it later. I'm just going to stick with the number one. And the second example here is I have my content view. 
And this is because Xcode provided me with this file and the insert the file name. This is the most generic file name you can have, but if you have multiple of your views and having a content view is kind of what it's supposed to mean. So you can rename things. Uh -huh. So if you comment link on content view, you have here the option to rename. Now it looks for all the instances where it used this. I can now change the name to something that is more, it's easier to understand what the view actually does or shows. So this is my calculator view. And you see now it changed it down here in the preview where I used it and changed the name. And also in my main view, it changed the name here. Okay, now let's have a look at what other types are there. So we had now here one type of number, but if you want to have a floating point number, you would need to change this here to a double. So in this case, I could also say here are 0 0.1, for example, but if this is an int, it's going to give me here an error. And you see here one very nice thing is that uh, Xcode is trying to infer, so it tries to guess the type that you're using. So it knows 0 0.1, can, this cannot be an int, it's probably something more like a double. And it tells you, yeah, you, you, you're using here something we think is a double, but you are declaring it here as an int doesn't really make sense. So it's really nice that it already tells you that you should take care of your types. And this type inference is so strong. If you would don't declare here what type it is, it also works. And if you option click now of, on final results, we see here that Xcode automatically sees, assigns the type of this final results to a double. So this is really nice. You can, some of them, are very similar, it might not guess the right one. For example, if you want to have a higher precision of one or one that is quite common used with some of the one type that's very similar to a double is a CG float. So this is also a floating type number, but it's more precise than a double. And in some cases we need to, or in some cases, um, some of the standard functions that we use in our code expects a CG float or an int, for example, if you, so you don't need to take care of what I actually type here, but if you have here, if you type in offset, so we can now offset actually our little hello world. It's not really that impressive yet, but you see here, we have this function with two input variables and down here it tells me, okay, I'm expecting that you give me a CG float for my X and a CG float for my Y. So if I use this once and now I've, and you see here, Resume. that it offsetted my hello world a little bit, just a tiny little bit. You don't need to put in 10.0, you can just put 10 and it will automatically handle this 10 as a CG float it's because it knows what you, what it's supposed to use inside of this offset. So in some cases it makes it quite easy to work with the, with this types because it's type safe. It also doesn't automatically change the type. So for example, um, if I use here this final result and I make this back to an int of one, now it tells me cannot convert value of type int to expected argument type CG float. It's like, if you would say this shouldn't be a problem. The good thing is Swift actually makes you aware that you're constantly changing types here. So I can use this fix and now it makes a float out of this int, but every time you do that, you might lose um, some informations that might be interesting or that might change the outcome because it does some rounding up in the background. Just wanted to say this. Now we had the types, some number types like double and CG float, but for a little calculator, int is fine. You also see that you have here, if you type in int, um, different ints, so 8, 16, 32, and 64. You should not um, use this one. You don't need to use this one. This is more interesting if you're saving, if you want to be really precise or really efficient with the way you save your data. So you don't want to take more space on disk than you need. But the thing is, if you use one of them, you 
can only store a certain range of numbers. So if you take eight and you try to save 1000, it's going to complain. So it says here overflow because it cannot store something in int eight. You can only go until 128, I think. Try and zoom. And 127. Yes, yeah, so this is the maximum number you can use if you use this int eight. So usually we don't you touch any of the int eight, 16, 32, we just use ints. Then another type that you can have is like this text or text type that I have here, this hello world. For example, in my calculator, I would have a title, which should be a string. And you could say calculate something. And because I already said, you don't need to declare here that you are working with a string, but just because then you see it directly, I'm leaving it in. So then I could use this new title in my text, just say use my title. Then another one that is very handy are Boolean values. So in some cases you want to say is true or false. Like, do you want to show this or not? Do you want to draw this or not? So in this case, we're going to add a little bit of code here. So we have a V stack, which means that I can place my button down here. So here I'm going to get a button. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to use this one right now and we're naming this clear or it's probably more A, C. I have now here this button, but if I didn't actually calculate anything yet, maybe I shouldn't. In some cases I want to disable my button. And you can do this with another view modifier here and this is disabled. So you see here I have a disabled where I can give a parameter. We have a, we go through what this underbar here means later. And you see it's a, it's a bool. So in here, you can give a true. So a bool can be can have two values. It can be true or false. And per default, it tells me disable is set to true. So now my button here becomes grayed out and I cannot press it anymore. If I have here false, it's enabled again. So for example, if I want to declare here this property, which is clear I'm going to make the most descriptive um, property name clear button is disabled uh -huh. getting the hang of really long names in swift now and i set this to false so now down here i can use it clear so it already has a auto completion giving me the right property name oh sorry this is a bool not a button <laughs> When you name Boolean values, usually you name it in order to remind yourself that this can be true or false and that you know in which case it's true or false. Um, a lot of times you use is as one of the hints in the property names. Because like this, it's, it's like a question saying my clear button is disabled. That's a true statement or as a false statement. And then directly know, yes, it's this is the disabled case and this is the, undis un the enabled case. If you work with these types, so you get some standard functionality. Like you can add strings together with plus. So this would be my title. So I could now here add this string with this title string and you see it coming up there. If you try to add a number here, so this is for example, my final result. It complains because now it tells me you have you you want to add two values with different types together and this is not allowed because we are here in this type safe environment. So make sure that you um, fix this by converting one of these to the same type as the other one. So one thing you can do with strings is is using a backslash, open parentheses and then close parentheses. And I can just use here a spacing in between. So this helps you if you want to use like values in strings, which I probably wouldn't do here in my button, but maybe I want to have a final results button here, or I want to actually show my result. So I have here a text and showing my final result. And here it again tells me this is not what we do. So I again should use this notation. So now we see in a text our final result. 
So this was some examples of types and we continue by building a little bit of our buttons here so we see more examples of what other Swift UI features we need in the next part.